friends, Memes here and welcome back. Today we are going over chapter 3 of the Azure Brain Dump series and we are going to talk about the benefits of cloud computing. To recap, the Brain Dump series is my version of a study with me video and it's a way to share knowledge that I acquire while preparing for IT exams. So the current topic is the AZ900 exam, which is Azure Fundamentals. I create weekly-ish videos breaking down each chapter and summarizing everything that I learned in that section. If you missed the first two videos, don't worry, I will put the links down below. The first video was an exam overview and the second one was defining what cloud computing is, what Microsoft Azure is, things like that. Before we jump into today's session, I want to thank all of my reoccurring viewers. I really appreciate you joining the videos and leaving comments and messages, and I hope that you enjoy the content. If you're new here, welcome. Please browse the channel, and I hope you stick around. Please remember to like, subscribe, and follow me on social media at Memes Tech Group, and let's get started. All right, so I typed up my notes today. So the notes are now on the monitor looking forward. I saw when I was editing, like looking down at the notebook is really weird. So um, I typed it up, I'm looking this way now. It's not as awkward, hopefully, but let's jump into it. We are gonna go over the benefits of cloud computing. In this section, we're gonna go over seven benefits of cloud computing. High availability, scalability, reliability, predictability, security, governance, and manageability. So there are three pillars of high quality cloud services. It's availability, reliability, and predictability. Let's start with availability, which is uptime. So the definition of high availability is the ability of a system to remain operational to users during planned and unplanned outages. Note that 100% availability is impossible. There's always going to be environment needs, maintenance windows, things like that. Let's jump into planned and unplanned outages. So planned outages, we're going to talk about four. One is patching, so patching operating system, patching security updates. Two is application updates and website maintenance. Three is hardware replacements. And four is hosting migration. So all of these are planned outages. Unplanned outages, we're going to talk about seven. So there is hardware failures, network disruptions, power outages, natural disasters, cyber attacks, software bugs, and poor scaling or architectural designs. Next, we're gonna talk about mitigating outages. So how to prepare for planned or unplanned outages. Mitigating planned outages, we're gonna talk about six ways. One is gradual deployment strategies, testing and monitoring deployments, easy rollback plans, small deployments, frequent deployments, and automation. Mitigating unplanned outages, we're gonna talk about nine. So the first one is make sure every core component has redundancy. Use Azure built-in features for high availability. Three is constant health monitoring probes. Four is automation, like reboot, add, redirect, fallback, automate those. Five is strong security practices. Six is be geographically distributed. Seven is disaster recovery plan. Eight is test your disaster recovery plan. And nine is load testing for scaling. All right, let's move on to scalability. So the definition of scalability is the ability of a system to accommodate increasing demands by adding or removing resources as needed. This is different than elasticity, which we will get into shortly, but that's more automation. Benefits of scalability. Scalability allows a system to adopt to changing usage patterns and handles increased traffic without requiring changes to application or design. Scaling is based on fluctuation. So depending on the company type, fluctuation uh, goes up and down based on day or time, demand, things like that. So some examples are like school registration is usually in September, so fluctuation will go up. Tax season is usually in April, depending on where you're at, so scale will be going up things like that. Moving on to types of scaling. In this section, we're going to talk about two. There's vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. Let's start with vertical scaling or VS for short. This is when you scale up or down. Um, so vertical scaling is when you add more resources to a single server. So you're increasing resources like memory, CPU, etc. 
Um, there is an upper max limit to, to VS. Um, it's 96 virtual CPUs, 384 uh, gigabytes of RAM. That's the limit for VS. And this does not improve high availability. Next one is horizontal scaling, which you might have guessed is HS. And this is when you scale in or out. This is when you add more servers to a system to add more resources. There is no limit to scaling for HS. It adds complexity for load balancing and it can, not always, but it can improve high availability. This is kind of a given, but the impact of system cost, we'll just discuss it really quick. So when you add more resources to a system, it will cost you more. When you reduce uh, resources, it may reduce your cost. But having a scaled system allows you for zero waste. So whenever you need more, you get more. Whenever you don't need any more, you remove it. It's a perfect size all the time. All right, let's talk about elasticity very quickly. Elasticity is defined as the ability of systems to quickly, easily scale up or down the amount of resources that a system uses in response to changing demands. Yes, this sounds very similar to scalability, but elasticity actually uses automation. So an AKA for it is auto scaling in the cloud. So how elasticity or auto scaling works, it will monitor metrics to determine how busy a system is. It will add resources when it exceeds this limit, uh, meaning that it's too busy, and then it will automatically remove those resources when it falls below a limit line, meaning it's not busy anymore. Elasticity of benefits, we're going to talk about four today. So it's more efficient and cost effective. It minimizes cost waste. Self-hosting systems tend to have a large percentage of over-provisioning resources for anticipated future growth, and it has the potential to have a higher max capacity level. The next benefit is reliability, and the definition for this is the ability of a system to perform its intended function without interruption and with high degree of accuracy. I found this cool example, it said, if a calculator gives an answer, which is availability, but it's the incorrect answer, the calculator is useless. So you need both in order to have a successful environment. How cloud can provide reliability. So we're going to discuss four ways. The first one is auto scaling. So scaling resources to prevent app crashes, multi-region deployment, global reach to prevent app crashes, data backups and replication, self-explanatory, and health probes and self-healing. So use those tools to detect issues and errors. All right, moving on to the benefits of predictability. So let's recap on those three pillars of high quality cloud. The first one was availability, the second one was reliability, and now we're gonna discuss predictability. The definition of predictability is the ability to forecast and control the performance and behavior of a system. This also includes the ability to predict future cost. Some benefits of predictability, it gives you the confidence that a system will continue to perform at the expectation level in the future, and it gives you reassurance that you won't get an unexpected higher bill in the future. How Azure achieves predictability? We're gonna talk about six ways. So the first one again is auto scaling. It gives the ability to scale up or down to help control the cost. Load balance, so it creates new instances when needed and removes those when demand goes down different instance types. So Microsoft offers cheaper virtual machines so you can select different tiers. Cost management tools. These are built-in tools that give an estimate of months and allows you to budget accordingly. APIs. You can use an automation program to report and analyze on cost. And price calculators. There are public calculators that help you see the cost based on your needs prior to purchasing. Next benefit is security, and there are many things to consider when talking about cloud security. Cloud providers are targets for hackers, so they spend a lot of time and money on security. Cloud providers are required to go through security audits and achieve compliance certifications. They provide customers with the tools they need to enable and monitor security on their own side. So security is a shared responsibility. It's not just the clouds and it's not just the customers. So obvious question, why is security needed? 
You want the confidence that your cloud provider cannot easily be defeated by hackers or those with malintent. How Azure achieves security. So one is there is an industry standard for compliance certifications. Two is MSRC, which is Microsoft Security Response Center. And this is a team of professionals that monitor the system looking for suspicious traffic. You can enable always on DDoS, which is denial of service, the Azure policy and blueprint, which is a governance service that provides a basic level of security, the RBAC, which is role-based access control. There is Azure AD, which is Azure Active Directory. It controls user access, always up to date platform service, which is security patches that are managed by Microsoft. There's also update management. So if you run your own platform, so infrastructure as a service, update management will allow you to schedule patches, encryption by default, and security services provided by Microsoft. Next benefit is governance. Governance is the process of defining, implementing, and monitoring a framework of policies that guide an organization. So how an organization chooses to do business or the policies in place to establish how an organization will use the cloud. Why is governance needed? A company wants to ensure its policies are followed in the cloud. It includes basic auditing and reporting and the enforcement of them. And customers want to be compliant with industry standards. So we're talking HIPAA, PCI, SOC, GDPC, NIST, CMMC, things like that. How to achieve governance in the cloud. Azure policies and blueprints, which is just the foundational tool for governance. Management groups, which helps apply policies in a hierarchy level. Custom roles. Soft deletes, which won't fully delete for a certain amount of time to avoid accidental deletions. And guides and best practices. The last benefit we're gonna to discuss today is manageability. So manageability has two categories. One is manage of cloud and two is manage in cloud. Manage of cloud is your ability to manage apps in the cloud and manage in cloud is the ability to manage cloud itself. Let's break down manage of cloud. So this is services and features of cloud to help you manage servers in the cloud. There are five categories. One is templates, two is automation, three is scaling, four is monitoring and alerts, and five is self-healing. Manage in cloud has four categories. One is web portal, two is command line interface and scripts, three is APIs, and four is PowerShell. So why is manageability important? The easier it is to work with your apps in the cloud impacts your cost, performance, and security. And lastly, how to achieve manageability in the cloud. So we're gonna talk about four different ways. The first one is Azure Portal. So in the Azure Portal, you can use CLI, you can use PowerShell or Cloud Shell, and you can use REST APIs. Two is consolidated monitoring and alert systems. So you have the ability to set up complex alerts. Three is the ability to use ARM templates, Bicep, Terraform, and four is auto scaling. All right, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful. The next section is going to be cloud service types. So I'll see you next week. Bye.